So I'd like to introduce now our amazing moderator for the evening, Linda Sussell. <laughs> Linda, Linda was a co-founder of the Women's March, and she is executive director of Empower Change, the largest Muslim-led social and racial justice organization in the United States. She has been involved in campaigns addressing pol police surveillance of Muslim communities, of police brutality, of immigration policy, and mass incarceration. She was also, uh, has organized Black Lives Matter demonstrations and, as I'm sure some of you know, she was the lead plaintiff in a suit challenging the legality of the Trump travel ban. In her own words, quote, she is every Islamophobe's worst nightmare. <laughs> Please welcome Linda Sasso. ago and I thought I would never get invited back but here I am I am again deeply honored and humbled to be here and I thank MEF and Sut who's always getting me into all kinds of trouble but as he said he doesn't have to do much because I'm always in trouble all on my own by myself I don't need anybody else to get me in trouble but I'm really I'm happy to be back and I'm happy to be back with this absolute rock star panel I mean the last time it was rock star and I was like Soot is not going to be able to do better than this. And then he just ups me one every time. So just wanted to give you a couple of updates about me since the last time that you saw me. I'm still as unapologetically Palestinian American as I was when I was back here in May. I am still unapologetically Muslim American. And always unapologetically from Brooklyn, New York. I mean, lots of things have happened in the last few months. Um, lots of great things have happened, and that's really important about the conversation that we're about to have, because oftentimes we come to these events to share with everyone all the bad things and all the things that opposition is doing, and they are doing, and they're pretty powerful people. But I always realize that we're also really powerful too. And as much as our opposition tries to criminalize us and tries to vilify us and tries to knock us down, we just keep getting up. And every time we get up, we're taller than we were when we were knocked down the first time. And so for me, I am always deeply grateful for the communities that I'm a part of, the solidarity movements that I'm a part of, for the wonderful groups even here at UMass who have supported us, the wonderful and bold and courageous faculty, the groups like JVP Western Mass and the SJP chapter here on this campus and all their friends and colleagues. Um, listen, we are uh, in these really interesting times and I, I actually, with all that we see and all the negativity that we see around us, I'm actually grateful to be alive, to witness the type of history that we are all witnessing that is happening right now. Sometimes we gotta wait decades later to look back at the moment and realize that we are making history, that we are part of history, that history is happening but you are living it. We are living it. I am living it. And I'm so proud to be alive and witness it with all of you. Since the last time you saw me, I've been named a 2020 Roddenberry Fellow. I actually, uh, this is self-promotion and I have to do it because my publisher makes me do these things. I wrote a book. Yeah, they're not gonna be really happy about the, my book that's coming out. But anyway, I have a book that's coming out in March 2020. I would love for you to support me. It's one of the first times you see, you know, Palestinian American Muslim woman in hijab that's super spicy, that has been picked up by a major publisher. So my book is called We Are Not Here to Be Bystanders. It's just, it's just, this is what I, this is my message to everyone. It's in every cause and every issue that I work on, on immigrant rights, on issues around Palestine, around being in solidarity with revolutions around the world, saying that black lives matter or saying that immigrants deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and we all deserve to be in spaces where we feel safe and can be who we are, it all goes back to one thing that I believe, 
we are not here to be bystanders. We are not here to be bystanders to injustice, whether that's here in the streets of, 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 of Massachusetts or it's in Brooklyn, New York or in Oakland or in Bolivia or in, in Chile or in Palestine or in any part of the world. We are not here to be bystanders. And just to share with you, you know, obviously, I'm, I guess MEF is nonpartisan. I don't even know, but I think they are. So I'm going to say that as a disclaimer before they get in trouble. But I'm also a national surrogate for Bernie Sanders, and this is why this is important. And there, trust me, I got a point. I got a point. You know, while we hear all of this and you'll hear the opposition, the criminalization of dissent and the ways in which those who stand up against the state of Israel and the human rights violations against the Palestinian people and the way that right-wing Zionist lobby groups are lobbying against the rights of Palestinians and against the rights of Americans to engage in free speech, all of that is happening. But we also got to talk about what else is happening. Voices for the self-determination of the Palestinian people is getting louder. And it's getting louder in places that you wouldn't presume for it to get louder. And that is at the highest echelons of the Democratic Party. When I hear a Jewish candidate for president, one of the greatest political leaders that this country has ever seen say that the fight against anti-Semitism is also the fight for Palestinian freedom. That happened here in your lifetime and in my lifetime. When we are hearing presidential candidates be cornered into saying that we must end the military occupation of the Palestinian people, when presidential candidates are being asked whether or not they would leverage U.S. aid to Israel to pressure them to stop the human rights violations of the Palestinian people, we have, that's been a long time coming, sisters and brothers, and that is because of you and your voices and your work and the political power that our movements are building together, not just those who support Palestine, but all movements. The intersectional movement that exists today is making history, not only for the people of Palestine, but for all of us here. And I'm so grateful to, again, be alive and be here with all of you. Now, it might get really hard, and I get it. I mean, I was telling folks before, when I wake up in the morning and I breathe, I'm controversial. I don't even have to say anything. <laughs> My life is hard when I wake up, but it's worth it, worth it. It's worth it, and I'm going to be who I am, and I hope that you, too, will stand in your convictions and your principles and know that it may be hard today, but one day you will look back and say, I was so proud to be on the right side of history. <laughs> once, once you see the groups of folks, those who've spoken before me and those who will speak tonight, and the many supporters of the groups like MEF and the work that they're trying to do, you really got to ask yourself a question. Who's t whose team do you want to be on? I want to be on the team with Dr. Cornell West. I want to be on the team with Soot Jolly. I want to be on the team with Sean King. I want to be on the team with Mark Lamont Hill and Dave Zirin and Roger Waters and Angela Davis. Though that's the team that I want to be on. And if you find yourself on the opposite side of that team, you got a lot of questions to ask yourself. Just saying. 